we have a pretty short question given to us, but the length of question is often deceiving. Many times the shorter questions are the ones that require you to do the most work. So let's read it carefully. Find the list positive integer n such that when 3 to the n is written in base 143, its two rightmost digits in base 143 are 0, 1. So since n has to be positive, we know n is equal to 0 is out of question. So we cannot argue that 3 to the 0 is going to be congruent to 1 in any base, and obviously that's not going to be accepted because n has to be positive. So having read the question, let's think about what it means for two rightmost digits in base 143 to be 0, 1. This is telling us that because 0 is 143rd digit in base 143, so if our number extends on and we end with 0, 1, that's telling us that this number can be written as, in base 10, 143 squared times this part, times this number, times some number, plus 1. Just as in, if this thing was in base 10, so if we had some number ending with 0, 1 in base 10, then this number can be represented as 100 times some number x, so x is this number right here, and x is this number right here in this case too, plus 1. So, or 10 squared times x plus 1. So if we were in base 143, then we can treat this as 143 squared times this value, times x, because you're starting with the 143 squared digit, and so on, for this number x, and we have an extra 1 sitting around. So we know 3 to the nth power can be represented as 143 squared x plus 1, or we can write this as 3 to the n is congruent to 1 mod 143 squared. Now obviously, writing out 3 to the n starting with 3, 9, 27, 81, and so on, and attempting to take mod 143 squared for each value until it becomes 1 is going to take way, way too long. I don't think that's going to be efficient at all. So let's think about how to break this question apart to easier parts, to part th parts that are easier to analyze. And to begin with, let's realize that 143 can be written as 11 times 13. So we are examining this number in mod 11 times 13 squared or mod 11 squared times 13 squared. And because 11 and 13 are relatively prime, 11 squared and 13 squared are relatively prime as well. So this, this congruence can be also written as 3 to the nth being congruent to 1 in mod 11 squared and 3 to the nth being congruent to 1 mod 13 squared. So if we can find the value n such that 3 to the nth is congruent to 1 in mod 11 squared and mod 13 squared, we are done. Now how can we find such n? So let's start with this first equation. 3 to the nth is congruent to 1 mod 11 squared or mod 121. So to begin with, before we get into more sophisticated analysis of this equation, of this congruence, let's take a look at some of the powers of 3 and see if any of them seem to be congruent to 1 mod 121 right away. And if it is, if we can find it quickly without doing really deep analysis, it's, that would be highly beneficial. So let's list out some powers of 3. And we see that already 243 is 1 mod 121 because 121 times 2 is 242. So we, we seem to get lucky for the first congruence. So we know n equals to 5 is going to do the trick because 3 to the fifth is congruent to 1 mod 11 squared. So we know this n has to be multiple of 5. We know this n has to be multiple of 5 because 3 to the 5th, 3 to the 10th, 3 to the 15th are going to be the values that's congruent to 1 mod 121. So are we going to get lucky with the second congruence? That's the question. So we have 3, 9, 27. Let's list out some of the powers of 3 once again. And you can go on more if you want to. 2187 and so on. And you can try to take mod 169. But... Just by, just by taking a look, it does not seem like any of these values are going to be congruent to 1 mod 169. 
And if you don't trust me, I highly encourage you to try testing out some other values, maybe starting with 243. And after you test out 2187, you probably don't want to go on because it may take you, who knows, 10s, 20s, or 30 more values before you get to the one that's actually congruent to 1 mod 169. So after testing out maybe 5 to 7, you, will, you really should stop and see if there's any other way of approaching this question. So 3 to the n being congruent to mod 169 does not seem to be working out for us too well. So let's go back to this. So why don't we examine this instead of in mod 169, just in mod 13. So let's take a look at 3 to the n's being congruent to 1 mod 13. And of course, just because something is congruent to 1 in mod 13 does not mean it has to be congruent to mod congruent to 1 in mod 169 or so, but at least it's going to narrow down the va possible values of n by telling us what n has to be multiple of. So, taking a look, we want 3 to the n to be congruent to 1 mod 13, and it's pretty easy to see that 27 is 13 times 2 plus 1, and hence congruent to 1 mod 13. So we know 3 to the third power, or 27, is congruent to 1 mod 13. So if something is to be congruent to 1 in mod 13 squared, you know this value of n has to be multiple of 3. Multiple of 3 because you have to be congruent to 1 in mod 13 before you are congruent to 1 in mod 13 squared. So knowing this, let's get back to this second congruence, and we know n is multiple of 3, so we know n can be written as 3 times some integer, k. So let's write this as 3 to the 3k is congruent to 1 mod 13 squared, and we know this thing can be written as, we know this thing can be written as 27 to the k's power, because 3 cubed is 27, is congruent to 1 mod 13 squared. Now, how can we simplify this, perhaps? Well, seeing this mod 13 squared, we know if we can write this as, for example, 13 to the 4th power times a, plus 13 to the 3rd power times b, plus 13 to the 2nd power times c, plus 13 times d plus e, then we know in mod 13 squared, all of these are going to cancel out. All of the 13 to the 4th is going to become 0. 13 cubed is going to become 0. 13 squared is going to become 0. So the only terms that are going to be left is going to be 13 times some constant plus another constant. And why am I thinking about this? And I'm thinking about this because we have the power of k. So we can break this apart into, for example, 13 plus 14 to the k's power, then we can use binomial expansion to write this as something very similar to this, and we know taking mod 13 squared, only two of the terms are going to remain. So why don't we try this? For 13 plus 14 to the k's power, we want the power of 0 to be awarded to 13, or power of 1 to be awarded to 13. When we give a power of 0 to 13, then 14 is going to have power of k, and when we give power of 1 to 13, then 14 is going to have power of k minus 1, and we should have k choose 1 right here, or simply k, because in binomial expansion, you have to multiply by binomial coefficients, and we know this thing is going to be congruent to this expression in mod 13 squared. And really, this isn't simplifying as much as we may want, because this 14 to the k is hard to simplify, and we have also this 14 to the k minus 1. Huh. So instead of 14, instead of 14 if, if we had 1, for example, if we had 1 to the k and 1 to the k minus 1, this may be so much easier, because 1 to the k can be simplified as 1, as well as 1 to the k minus 1. Wait, in fact, we can actually do that. Instead of writing this as 13 plus 14 to the k's power, we can write this as 13 times 2 plus 1 to the k's power. And now this thing is going to allow this 14 instead of 14 to be 1. And that's going to simplify this expression tremendously. So let's try this out. So we know this is going to be congruent to when we award the power of 0 to 13 times 2, we should have 1 to the k's power. And we should have k because of k choose 1. 
times 13 times 2 to the first power times 1 to the k minus 1 power. And this thing is, that's 1, this entire thing is 1, plus 26k, or let me just write it as 13 times 2k in mod 13 squared. And we know this thing has to be congruent to 1. So we know it's congruent to 1, and subtracting 1 from both sides gets us 13 times 2k is congruent to 0 mod 13 squared. So we know there has to be two 13s. So we know at least we know the expression on the left side has to have at least two powers of 13. That's telling us that k, there is at least one 13 arising from k. So we know k is congruent to 0 mod 13 because k has to own at least one 13 in its prime factorization. Now, what is this telling us about n? Well, our n, our n was 3k, if you remember. I know I wrote it down, yes, right here. So we know n is equal to 3k, and we know n is equal to 3k, and we know n is positive. So we know n is equal to 3k, and we know n is positive, and we know k is equal to 0, 13, 26, and so on is going to satisfy this equation. But we are looking at the list positive value of n. So let's pick k of 13. k of 0 is not going to work. That's not going to make n positive. So we know n is going to be 3 times 13 or 39 or multiple of 39. So what do we know? From the second, from the analysis of the second congruence, we have found, we have found that n has to be multiple of 39. Because 39 is the least power of n, that's going to allow it to be congruent to 1 in mod 13 squared. And we know from the analysis, in mod 11 squared, we have found that n has to be a multiple of 5. So what's the least positive integer n? What's the least positive integer n such that it's multiple of 5 and multiple of 39 at the same time? Well, that's 39 times 5 or 195. And we are done.